Members, uh, Stuart Dixon has given notice of an urgent oral question to the Minister for the Economy. I would remind members that if they wish to ask a supplementary question, they should raise continually in their places. The member who asked the original question will be called automatically for a supplementary. Clerk, please read the question. To ask the Minister for the Economy what action she is taking to avoid the loss of 700 jobs at Caterpillar in Larne and Belfast. And I call the Minister for the Economy. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The decision by Caterpillar in the US to enter a period of consultation will be a worrying time for many. While the company has explained that this is part of a process for the restructuring of its electrical power division at Larne, the scale of the potential job losses will be a great shock to the workforce and their families. I met with Caterpillar Northern Ireland's senior management team, along with representatives from Invest NI on Friday to express my disappointment at the decision. I have asked Invest NI, which has a good working relationship with Caterpillar, to continue to engage with the company throughout this consultation period to explore ways to minimise the impact at the Northern Ireland sites. And I know that this is happening today. Tomorrow I am meeting the Unite Union to hear their concerns and I'm confident that everyone will be working to ensure that we can support the workforce at this critical time. Be assured that my department and Invest NI, alongside other stakeholders, including Mid and East Antrim Borough Council, the Northern Ireland Chamber, Manufacturing NI and MEGA, are liaising with Caterpillar Senior Management to ensure that assistance is available to support workers throughout this process. This will include redundancy clinics, reskilling, job fairs and identification of job opportunities. The company is also working with both union representatives and salaried worker representatives as it enters the 90-day uh, consultation period. Thank you. Call Stuart Dixon, supplementary. Um, thank you, and thank you very much, Minister, for agreeing to come to the House so quickly to, to answer questions about these uh, potential job losses in Larne. Minister, I'm sure you will agree with me that there is um, a movement in manufacturing, not only in Northern Ireland but across the world, towards a greener and higher tech economy in our manufacturing sector. And indeed, that we need to go all out on this to secure major opportunities for the future. So, Minister, can you tell us what you're doing to uh, ensure that greener apprenticeships and skills are at the heart of your future economic strategy and that money that is needed to provide uh, for future growth of companies like Caterpillar is there to deliver? Um, can I thank the member uh, for his question? Um, as I said just uh, in the House this afternoon, um, in rebuilding a, a stronger economy, I identified um, a clean, green economy as not just uh, an ambition for Northern Ireland's environment, but an ambition for growth in its economic uh, sectors. I believe that in doing so, that we can add many thousands of jobs uh, in Northern Ireland, as well as protecting our environment for future generations. That is an extremely important part of my economic uh, strategy going forward and has been uh, part of that medium plan. We um, will um, be working um, with Invest NI to ensure um, that they are uh, opening up those opportunities within uh, that uh, clean energy <coughs> sector. Uh, to ensure that progress has been made. And indeed, I've also been working with uh, Mid and East Andrum Council and other councils in Northern Ireland and through the City Deal process to make sure that this is an opportunity that we do not miss in Northern Ireland. And as I said earlier in the House, I spoke with my colleagues um, in other parts of the United Kingdom just last week in recognising uh, that this is an important ambition for all parts of the United Kingdom as we go forward with economic recovery. I thank the Minister for her responses so far. Um, Minister, Caterpillar have indicated obviously that these job losses are not related to COVID or Brexit. Um, so, As part of the economic recovery strategy, will you be looking at encouraging the start-up and capacity building of Indigenous business and how we harness the potential of key sectors, both those more established sectors but also those developing ones like green energy, creative industries, digital innovation, etc.? Yes. Um, 
Um, Caterpillar have uh, indicated very clearly that this is not about Brexit. It's not about COVID. This was a corporate decision taken um, at their uh, corporate headquarters about how the operation uh, works globally. Um, unfortunately, um, this has resulted uh, in a terrible posi uh, position for workers uh, and their families in Larne. And it is very worrying and, and uh, a very difficult time uh, for them. And as I said, I met uh, with uh, senior management from Caterpillar in Northern Ireland on Friday. I intend to meet the unions to see what we can do working together to try to alleviate what is a very, very difficult situation. And yes, I do believe uh, that uh, encouraging startups, uh, working with Indigenous companies is an important element um, of our economic growth strategies going forward. Um, we have many um, wonderful um, and really very ambitious and globally operating uh, Northern Ireland companies that have really been born and bred in Northern Ireland um, and that are doing absolutely magnificent things. We intend to help to support them or work to support them, but also work to support those uh, small startups um, where uh, we see uh, significant growth opportunities. And there are very innovative startup companies in Northern Ireland, um, and we are working particularly in the digital sector to support them. I call David Hillage. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her answers thus far. Uh, this is an unmitigated disaster for workers, families, and the people of Larne and indeed East Antrim in general. And there's been very poor communication from the company. If it hadn't been for the night shift, workers coming off uh, night shift or even slightly before that, tipping us off, news would have been on that morning before elected members in the area knew, so that was very bad. It boils down to reorganisation of the company, but without dressing it up, it's really cheap labour and it's going to be going to India and beyond and other places. So there's no, there's no dressing it up, that drip drip effect is now with us. Is the Minister confident that Caterpillar has a long term future here in Northern Ireland? Again, um, I must say that I agree uh, with the member that this is incredibly difficult for the Larne plant, for the workers and the families of those who face an uncertain future um, because of this. Um, Caterpillar have indicated that this is part of their corporate global um, overview um, of where the company um, is operating um, and how that they can be more cost effective or competitive um, in that global market. However, um, Caterpillar will continue to be an important part of the Northern Ireland economy. Um, and even if job losses were at a maximum, and I hope with working with InvestNI that we can actually draw back some of those projections, but even if it were at a maximum, it would still have 900 employees in Northern Ireland and be a valued and uh, important contributor to the economy here. Um, if I may, Mr Speaker, just expand on that slightly. Um, I did speak um, also uh, with Caterpillar's um, agent uh, who works with government um, in London um, about this issue on Friday as well. And uh, Caterpillar operates on 23 sites right across the United Kingdom. And both InvestNI um, and myself made the point that it would also be important that we open up opportunities for those supply companies from Northern Ireland into that um, larger UK family of sites um, so that maybe opportunities that would be lost at Arne, in Larne will open up in other parts of the United Kingdom and Invest and I will be exploring that with the company in the coming days. And I call Sinead McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, Caterpillar's job losses are absolutely devastating for the workers. Uh, for their families and for their communities in both Larne and Belfast. And unfortunately, we're probably at the very beginning of um, major job losses uh, throughout Northern Ireland in the coming months. So uh, that, is, that is something very sobering to think about. But will the Minister agree that we must urgently reshape the economy for the future? particularly around investing in skills, um, new green technologies. Uh, and we have to accelerate our programmes of change 
and, and what is she doing to lead and deliver in this revolution um, for, for driving technology within the context of the economy in Northern Ireland? I think that, um, and I've said this before in this House, um, COVID has been both a disruptor and an accelerator in the way um, the economy has operated. And so therefore the process, for example, of digitization has uh, progressed at a much, much higher and faster pace than we would have maybe anticipated. And we see in the last six to eight months um, that process uh, accelerating um, throughout Northern Ireland, indeed globally throughout the world. For our digital sector, for example, this has been uh, an opportunity to prove both innovation and resilience. Um, and many of our uh, companies within the digital sector are winning and gaining work uh, from other uh, sister companies within uh, larger corporations. So we do need uh, to look very, very quickly at what uh, the future will look like, not just for manufacturing, but for all um, aspects of our economy. And that is why it's important uh, that we brought forward uh, the apprenticeship recovery program, the new apprenticeships that, are, um, that we will be able to create uh, with that, and also the apprenticeship um, challenge fund. That's why it's important that we continue um, to look at the Assured Skills Academy, that really quick, sharp um, intervention in the economy where jobs are needed really very, very quickly in different sectors. And I'm really looking forward um, in the next uh, few weeks to going to some of those companies that have completed um, Assured Skills programmes and where many of those young people have uh, gained jobs. I often quote uh, that of the Microsoft one that we had just a few months ago, completely done online, um, that 23 out of 24 of those young people in that uh, Skills Academy got jobs. It's also one of the reasons why we need to bring forward the skills strategy for Northern Ireland um, and how we need to look at, and again, last week... Um, Minister. I, last week I gave a third, this is probably my favourite subject, speaker, <laughs> Mr Speaker, skills and improving uh, uh, young people's opportunities in Northern Ireland. Um, but I did uh, look at how we would uh, improve skill levels at uh, levels three, four and five, because those are where the skills gaps are. Thank you, Nicole. Roy Beggs. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Some ten years ago, Caterpillar employed almost 3,000 people in Northern Ireland, but sadly that has declined significantly. Previously, we were told that the smaller units, uh, which would be mass-produced, were moving to China, but the bespoke larger units were remaining uh, in Larne in Northern Ireland. Given this significant announcement, can the Minister advise what support will be given to those workers who may lose their job? And she met the, the uh, management uh, on Friday. What commitment have they given to remain in Northern Ireland, given that, that there has already been a significant change in previous commitments? I am on record in this House in this debate as saying that I do believe that Caterpillar will remain um, an important part of the economy of Northern Ireland. Um, and while there are difficult days ahead in Larne, um, I think that we can work with the company to ensure, for example, that those very specific bespoke solutions um, that Northern Ireland has been so good at in the past will remain and indeed that uh, the Northern Ireland um, management team have identified opportunities for growth um, within uh, those sectors. I'm also um, extremely encouraged that uh, their back office operations um, are uh, stable um, and working well uh, within Northern Ireland and I think that this, there is opportunities in this direction as well. I think that Caterpillar is an important um, company. It's an important company to Northern Ireland. It's an important company to the United Kingdom. Um, and I will be talking to Minister Zahawi um, about this issue later on in the week, given the strategic importance of the company. Nicole Andre Muir. Thank you very much, Mr. 
much, Mr. Speaker, and thank you for the Minister for her responses to date. The announcement by Caterpillar is a body blow for all those affected and also for the economy of East Antrim. In New Decade New Approach, there is a commitment to publishing an, uh, an economic industrial strategy. I know the Minister is very focused on action, but we do need an overarching strategy for the time ahead as we try to safeguard jobs and livelihoods across Northern Ireland. Can the Minister give us an update on whereabouts we are in relation to that? As the member is aware, uh, my department have been focusing on bringing forward a number of strategies um, that will um, feed into the economy of Northern Ireland, an overarching economic strategy, but feeding into that an energy strategy, a skills strategy, um, those kind of um, ideas um, that will build the Northern Ireland economy as a whole. However, we should not always just be only focused uh, on strategies, and we should be focused on those short-term gains that we can make for the economy um, that make a real difference in time for people's lives. And that's why, for example, with the energy strategy, I'm already engaging uh, around the potential for hydrogen, around and setting uh, minimum targets for renewable electricity generation in Northern Ireland. These are important issues that we can uh, set the direction of travel now while working on the larger time frame uh, of the overall strategy. Call Jim Allister. The uh, management told you it's not about Brexit, it's not about COVID. Did they tell you what it is about? Is it plain and simple job migration, uh, moving for cheap labour? Is that the case? And if so, can that be spelled out? And in that regard, would you agree with me that it's quite appalling that today a senior manager in Caterpillar has, through the offices of the chief executive of the local council, sought to muzzle councillors and MLAs by urging that we should not talk about this issue. We should not speak in good or bad terms about Caterpillar. And indeed, it is all the more disappointing the Chief Executive thought that was a message he should give legs by even sending it out. Um, I'm unaware of the message, um, obviously, uh, as I'm uh, contributing to the debate um, here in the Assembly. It is important um, that we understand uh, the motivation um, for what has happened at Caterpillar Larne. Um, as I was speaking to that senior management team, they indicated that this was uh, part of the global restructuring um, of the company. Um, and that uh, this um, is uh, how the companies see the way forward in terms of location to market and cost competitiveness. That is very, very regrettable. Having said that, Caterpillar is an important part of the overall economic outlook for Northern Ireland. It remains an important uh, employer and in a UK level contributes about four and a half billion to the economy of the United Kingdom overall. We want to work with Caterpillar to ensure that we will be able to maximise any future opportunities and ensure that this company remains part of our future. Thanks, Minister, for her answer. It's very concerning once again that workers in manufacturing here facing the prospect of job losses and life on the less than adequate universal credit. My sympathies go out to them all, including ones in my constituency. Uh, does the Minister agree with me uh, that we need to move away from a failed economic model that throws large sums of public money at major corporations with no guarantees that jobs will be safe and secure and instead move towards a more environmentally friendly and sustainable model of job creation and protection? Um, the state taking a lead role so those people's lives aren't uh, thrown up in the air, such as they are in Caterpillar? Much as I am tempted to get into um, a debate um, about uh, public versus private sector um, state uh, companies, our companies, um, I will refuse to do that today. I think what's important today is that this assembly commits to working with those who uh, face an uncertain future uh, in Larne and indeed in uh, the Caterpillar family uh, in Northern Ireland as a whole, that we try to minimise the number of jobs that will be impacted. And we, we work with Caterpillar globally to try to ensure that any opportunities that there are to bring further work to Northern Ireland are maximised. As I have said repeatedly during this uh, debate, 
Northern Ireland remains an, our caterpillar remains an important contributor to the Northern Ireland economy with an, and is a very important employer. We want uh, to work with them to secure the future. Gordon Dunn. I thank the Minister for our answers today. And I think we all feel the pain and the loss of another sector of, of engineering have been hit in, through Caterpillar. Can the Minister give us an assurance that Invest and I are doing everything to sustain jobs within Northern Ireland during the, the COVID crisis and that we will not see a recurrence maybe later this week or tomorrow uh, affecting other such businesses in the province? I, uh, through my department and, in, and indeed uh, through Invest and I, will do everything that we can to minimise uh, job losses in Northern Ireland, but I can't predict the future. And we live in an uncertain economic environment. And that environment is fed um, by COVID, um, particularly for firms here in Northern Ireland. And I am on record many, many times in this chamber as saying that that uh, uncertain economic environment could lead to further job losses. And indeed, uh, we need to get to a situation where we learn to live with COVID rather than any proposed cycle of lockdowns um, that we have seen thus far. That has been my view consistently throughout this whole process. It remains my view. Um, Mr Speaker, if I must ju may just take the opportunity to say my uh, department have been doing some modelling indeed on the impact of the four-week lockdown. That is um, projected to have a 400 million hit to the economy of Northern Ireland. That's not something that we can sustain over and over again. Call Orlea Flynn. Um, thank the Minister for her answers. And a previous member had already asked um, around the support that could be put in place for all those workers that could be potentially losing their jobs. I am um, really glad to hear about already the Minister's mentioned around the upskilling opportunities. Um, but I wonder could she elaborate a wee bit more on the work and conversations with the councils and how they could potentially support these workers who may be facing um, unemployment? Gurmiogut. Thank you. Mid and East Antrim Council, through its Chief Executive, is one of the most proactive councils um, on this particular matter. Um, and I know that they, along with Invest, uh, and of course the careers service uh, within my department, will be doing everything they can to support uh, workers and their families uh, in uncertain and very, very difficult times. I call Matthew O'Toole. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Minister, with respect, you seem quite keen to um, uh, not rock the boat too much uh, with Caterpillar, who have, uh, in the last few days, sacked hundreds of workers in Northern Ireland with very little explanation, other than saying it's not the two big global, it's not the two big economic crises of the age. Um, can I specifically ask what conversations you referred to or alluded to, conversations Invest NI are having around um, future plans? Can I, and you seem to imply that that was about possibly protecting some of the job losses that have been announced. Can you say a bit more than that? Is Invest NI going to be promising? public money or some kind of assistance to Caterpillar and have there been specific guarantees or pledges from Caterpillar around protecting those jobs? Well, I can understand that the member may want to have a headline out of today's debate and his contribution to it, but I have no desire in the wide earthly world to add to the fear and anxiety that exists among workers in Caterpillar, both those who may actually be made redundant and those who uh, are going to remain. I believe that Caterpillar has an important future in Northern Ireland. I will commit the resources of my department and invest in I to talking to Caterpillar and exploring with Caterpillar how we can continue to secure that future. And as I've said, it's not just an important company for Northern Ireland. It has 23 sites across the rest of the United Kingdom, contributing about four and a half billion into the economy of the United Kingdom every year. And I think there's an important opportunity for supply chain companies to be part of that family uh, of Caterpillar in the future. And members, that concludes this item of business. Members, I have received notification from the members of the Business Committee of a motion to extend the sitting past 7 p.m. Understanding Order 10, brackets 3A. Clerk, please read the motion.